Hello and welcome to Mouse in the Mitten Trivia Pod, a podcast where you can test your Disney trivia knowledge over a variety of topics. My name's Court and I will be your host. Our game will consist of five rounds of six questions covering everything from your basic Disney facts to some unknown facts. Each question is worth one point unless otherwise noted. Make sure you follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok at Mouse in the Mitten. And if you're watching us over here on YouTube, make sure you subscribe, turn on that bell for notifications, and give this video a thumbs up. Now, I know there are a lot of different things that go into planning the perfect Disney vacation. If you need a little bit of help in planning that perfect Disney vacation, feel free to reach out to me. You can email me at mouseinthemitten at gmail.com. We'd love to get you all taken care of. Well, I am recording this a little bit earlier than when I normally record this just because it's 4th of July, everything else like that. So we will have a 4th of July celebration se uh, section later on in the game. But if anything breaks, wait until next week and we'll have a little bit of fun with that as well. But for now, round one will be all about Wally. Now, this week we saw the anniversary of Wally, -E, and it's one of my personal favorites. My wife and I will disagree on how awesome this movie is. I think it's fantastic. She's not his fan, but then I can get that as well. But I love it. I think it's just so awesome. It's cute. It's funny. So let's talk about Wally -E with question number one. Wally -E was the third highest-grossing animated movie in 2008. Name either of the two movies that were above Wally. -E. One was a sequel to a successful animal movie, and the other was the first in what would become a successful franchise. Question number two. What animal is Wally's pet that goes with him when he is collecting items? Question number three. Name the love interest of Wally. Question number four. What is the significance of Fred Willard's role in Wally? -E? Question number five. What does Wally -E mean? And question number six. Name the corporation that created the issues on Earth and the spaceship that everyone was on. This company is the same one that makes appearances in other Pixar movies. All right, I'm going to give you a few seconds worth of music, try to come up with those answers, and then I will return. Let's get you some answers here on Wally. -E. So, question number one Wally -E was the third highest grossing animated movie in 2008. Name either of the two movies that were, were above Wally. -E. Well, the correct answers there were Madagascar, Escape to Africa, or Kung Fu Panda. So, I mentioned that it was a sequel. Now, one of them was a sequel. That was Madagascar. Obviously, the second one came out that same year, and that was the Escape to Africa. That one, actually, believe it or not, outgrossed. Wally, -E, I still don't know why it's it wasn't that good. And then Kung Fu Panda, that was the first Kung Fu Panda that came out. Obviously, we have the next one coming out this year, so it's still a franchise that is going very strong. Question number two: What animal is Wally's -E pet that goes with him when he is collecting items? That animal is a cockroach. Just you know, they went with the idea of a cockroach because they say that you know everything when the world apocalypse happens that everything's going to be dead except for cockroaches. So they of course had to lean into that a little bit and gave Wally -E a pet cockroach. Question number three: Name the love interest of Wally. -E. Well, that is Eve, and that is Eve. She is a pod that gets sent down to Earth to detect for living forms. She finds the plant that Wally -E has in the boot, and Wally -E falls in love with her. Question number four. What is the significance of Fred Willard's role in Wally? -E? Well, he is the first live action character in the Pixar franchise. Obviously, Pixar known for its animation and everything else like that. Fred Willard was the first feature uh, human in a Pixar movie. So it, he has some significance. There's been a couple others since then, but he was the first one to have a big role. Question number five. 
What does WALL-E mean? Well, it stands for Waste Allocation Load Lifter Earth Class. So that tells me that there was waste allocation load lifters on other planets as well or other spaceships. So his specificity was just on Earth, hence the E for Earth Class. Last but not least, question number six. Name the corporation that created the issue on Earth and the spaceship that everyone was on. And this company has made other appearances in Pixar movies as well. That is, by and large, if you had said BNL, it's the same thing. That is the abbreviation for by and large. But yeah, we've seen that company in other Pixar movies as well. Uh, it's what they essentially blame everything that happened in the movie on is that corporation including what happens in the spaceship, everything else like that. But again, I, I mentioned this last week of the movies we talked about. If you need a good smile, a good laugh, just something to kind of, you know, just kind of relax to, Wally is definitely one of those movies. Continuing on now into round number two. Round number two is our fast facts. This round is filled with simple questions that have simple answers. Today's category is Disney soundtracks. For this round, what's gonna happen is I'm gonna give you the name of three songs on a Disney soundtrack. You just have to name that soundtrack. So let's get started with question number one. Let it go. Do you wanna build a snowman? And for the first time in forever. Question number two. Gaston. Be our guest and something there. Question number three. Jolly Holiday, Feed the Birds, and Chim Chim Churi. Question number four. At all costs, I'm a star. This is the thanks I get. Question number five. Why should I worry? Streets of Gold and perfect isn't easy. And question number six. A conversation, a cover is not the book, and turning turtles. All right, let's give you some answers here. Some of these are some very iconic soundtracks. So question number one. Let it go. Do you want to build a snowman? And for the first time in forever, that is Frozen. I want to throw in there Love is an Open Door. My daughter is almost two. That is her all-time favorite song right now. And every time it comes on, duh, it's never on key, but it is always adorable. Question number two. Gaston, be our guest and something there. Well, that is Beauty and the Beast. I obviously couldn't go with the song Beauty and the Beast. That would have been a little too easy. Thought I'd increase the difficulty there just a little bit for sure. Question number three. Jolly Holiday, Feed the Birds, and Chim Chim Cheree. If the first two didn't get you there, hopefully the third one did. That is Mary Poppins. Again, could have gone with a spoonful of sugar. Could have gone with supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. I just didn't feel like spelling that one out. So that's, but those are still some great songs from that soundtrack. And of course, Feed the Bird, Walt's favorite song. Question number four. At all costs, I'm a star. This is the thanks I get. That is from Wish. So that is one of the newer soundtracks. It's not as good. Chris Pine, he's an okay singer. I, I'm not rushing to see him on Broadway anytime soon. But okay singer and an okay soundtrack. Question number five. Why should I worry? Streets of Gold and Perfect Isn't Easy? That is Oliver and Company. Obviously known for its great music because you had Billy Joel. You never go wrong with Billy Joel. I, that's At least that's my precedent. And again, Oliver and Company happened in New York City. You can't have another singer than Billy Joel for that movie either. Last but not least, question number five. A conversation, a cover is not the book, and Turning Turtles, that is from Mary Poppins Returns. A Place Where the Lost Things Are is kind of the big song that came from this. This is one of the first movies that Lin-Manuel Miranda wrote the music for. And you can see some of his touches on some of the songs, but definitely was also trying to hold true to the original Mary Poppins as well. So yeah, some great soundtracks and definitely some of these are very nostalgia inducing. Continuing on now into round number three. Round number three is connecting the circles. For this round, I'll be asking you five questions that may or may not be Disney related. But the answers do relate somehow through Disney. And that's going to be your sixth and final question is what is the connection? So first five questions may or may not be Disney related. But somehow the answers do connect through Disney. That's going to be your last question. So let's get started with question number one. 
in wrestling and boxing, what is the largest group by size known as? Question number two. Often said by a dad when he leaves his son at the homestead alone, this is a four-word expression for being in charge of a home. Question number three. Name the first major motion picture released by Pixar. Question number four. Name the first full-length animated movie released by Disney as a musical featuring a talking dog known for his green hat, though he never wore it throughout the movie. Question number five. What is a two-word expression for a fanciful or hard-to-believe story told by someone? And question number six there is, what is the connection? I'm going to give you a few seconds worth of music, try to connect those circles, and then I will return. All right, let's give you some answers here and see if we can connect those circles. So question number one. In wrestling and boxing, what is the largest group by size known as? That is known as the heavyweight group. That is the group that Muhammad Ali, Mike Tyson, they all fought in. There is weight restrictions, but they are essentially the biggest individuals in that weight class. Question number two. Often said by a dad when he leaves his son at the homestead alone, what is a four-word expression for being in charge of a home? That is the man of the house. So oftentimes, especially like in shows that were older, you'd hear, you see the dad leave, look at the son and say, you're the man of the house now. That's where we oftentimes see that phrase, but it's still used today. Question number three. Name the first major motion picture released by Pixar. We're talking about Toy Story. I've said this time and time again, watch Toy Story and then go watch Inside Out 2. You will see just how the animation has improved so much. Question number four. Name the first full-length animated movie released by Disney as a, feature, as a musical featuring a talking dog known for his green hat. Though he never wore it in this movie. That is the Goofy movie. We're talking about the first musical featuring Goofy. He's been here and there, but this is his first musical that he was featured in. And he never wore his green hat. He is known for that famous green hat. Never wore it in the movie. So, kind of a interesting twist. But, yeah, that is the Goofy movie. Great movie, by the way. Last but not least, question number five. What is a two-word expression for a fanciful or hard-to-believe story told by someone? That is a tall tale. Oftentimes, you'll hear someone who's elabor elaborating on a story and embellishing it and saying, well, that is quite the tall tale that you're telling there. So that's where that comes from as well. So question number six is, what is the connection there? So we had answers such as heavyweight, man of the house, toy story, the Goofy movie and Tall Tale, well, those are all Disney feature movies that came out in 1995. Now, included in this list is Pocahontas. I want to include her in this list, but I just couldn't figure out the wording to quite figure it out and put that one in. So figure these were some good are some good movies but pocahontas is a fantastic one as well my favorite out of this list is either the goofy movie or heavyweights i just love those movies heavyweights was a pivotal part of my childhood growing up um i was an offensive lineman all throughout high school so we watched it all throughout um high school and it's just it's, it's always it always makes you laugh if you love the Mighty Ducks and that comedy, you will love Heavyweights. But again, a great group of movies here. Definitely 1995 put out some bangers, and we can continue to watch those on Disney+. Plus. Thank goodness. Continuing on now into round number four. Round number four is traditionally held for movie anniversaries, and today is the same, and that is because we are talking about Ratatouille. Not just a delicious dish, but a delicious and fantastic movie. And... Being a fan of the Lost Bros, they have a shirt that just came out that says the original Yes Chef with Remy. It is hilarious. I love it. I might think about buying it. 
before my next Disney trip. I got I got to think about it still. It's it's in it's a dark color and I'm going in the summertime. Not a good combination for a poo like fellow like myself. Anyway, all these questions have to do with Ratatouille. Let's get started with question number one. What city is the location of the of most of the movie Ratatouille? Question number two. Who is Remy's brother that is taught how to properly eat food? Question number three. What role did Remy's dad give to Remy because of his great nose? Question number four. Linguini is related to Gaston in what way? Question number five. Who does Linguini fall in love with from the kitchen staff? And question number six. Starting on May 11, 2007, what promotional tour started as a way to promote the film and gave a chance for people to see a preview of the movie and meet some of the actors of Ratatouille? All right, I'm going to give you a few seconds worth of music, try to come up with those answers, and then I will return. All right, let's give you some answers here on Ratatouille. So question number one. What city is the location of most of the movie of Ratatouille? That is Paris, France. I had I just kind of had to keep this in round four because last week we talked about the Hunchback of Notre Dame, which is in Paris. This week we're talking about Paris as well. Had to leave it in there. Again, we're getting excited for the Olympics here. We are in the Olympic month, and of course it's in Paris. I'm getting excited. Question number two. Who is Remy's brother that is taught how to properly eat food? That is a meal. There's a shot of a meal and he's just eating food and Remy's like no don't just hork it down and he shows him how to properly eat the food and that's also his one of his best friends as well question number three what role did Remy's dad give to Remy because of his great nose well that was poison checker if you said poison control something along those lines you get the point there but yeah once Remy's dad realized that Remy had a great nose and could smell really, really well. He made sure that every piece of food that the rats brought back, Remy would smell to make sure that it was clean and it doesn't have poison. That's, I guess, one way to do it. Question number four. Linguini is related to Gaston in what way? Well, Linguini is Gaston's son. Now, Gaston apparently doesn't know that he has a son. Linguini is his son, and that's why he technically is heir to the restaurant. And technically is the one that's supposed to be in charge of the restaurant. But he has no restaurant experience, and that's where we get a lot of the premise of the movie. Question number five. Who does Linguini fall in love with from the kitchen staff? He falls in love with Colette. She is the only female that is in the kitchen staff, teaches Linguini how to cook, teaches him how to kind of basically live in Paris because Linguini doesn't have a French accent, which would make me believe that he was American living in France. Definitely a big step and definitely a big hill to climb. And Colette helped him with that. Last but not least, question number six. Starting on May 11, 2007, what promotional tour started as a way to promote the film and gave a chance for people to see a preview of the movie and meet some of the actors of Ratatouille? That was called Ratatouille's Big Cheese Tour. They toured around the nation. They went to a couple of big cities, kind of gave fans a chance to meet some of the actors, some of the people that were involved with the movie, gave them an extended preview. Plus, there was wine and cheese. It's, it's a movie based in Paris, France, about a rat. Of course, they're going to have cheese at this event. But from what I've been told, it was a minor success. So much so, they haven't done it since that movie came out. But it, it was it's a cool idea. I like the idea. Maybe just at the beginning stages of that idea. We'll, we'll have to wait and see. But again, a great movie. So much fun. And if you have time, need a little pick-me-up, Ratatouille is another good example of a movie that will just make you smile. Wrapping up today's game, round number five is titled July 4th. 
obviously it is the 4th of July, the day that this video is being released. There's a lot of American history within the Disney parks, within Walt Disney's past, within what's going on there. Some of it good, some of it not so good. So some of these questions have to do with the ties with some of the America, within some of the parts of the USA that made Walt so proud to be part of it. So let's get started with question number one. What animatronic made its debut at the 1964-65 World Fair depicting a president of the United States and a president that Walt Disney looked up to? Question number two. There's a replica of what Philadelphia landmark known for its large crack in Disney World? Question number three. In Liberty Square in Disney World, how many lanterns hang in the giant tree and what do they represent? Question number four. 1952 saw the very first political advertisement on television, and it was made by Disney, famously produced by Roy O. Disney. What presidential candidate was the commercial for? Question number five. What made the 500 army troops at the Di Walt Disney Studios in Burbank, California, unique? And question number six. What well-known character was often used in a lot of World War II movies made by Disney? All right, I'm going to give you a few seconds worth of music, try to figure out those answers, and then I will return to wrap up today's game. All right, let's get some answers here and wrap up today's game, all talking about July 4th. So question number one. What animatronic made its debut at the 1964-65 World's Fair depicting a president of the United States and a president that Walt Disney looked up to? Well, that was Abraham Lincoln. That is still out in California, still operating, and still, I mean, it's really cool. And that's what led to the Hall of Presidents in Disney World and a lot of different animatronics that we see even today. Question number two. There's a replica of what Philadelphia landmark known for its large crack in Disney World? That is the Liberty Bell. The Liberty Bell has a replica in Disney World. It was brought, I believe, in the 80s over there. It sits under, like, you can see it right when you walk in front of the Hall of Presidents. Question number three. In Liberty Square in Disney World, how many lanterns hang in the giant tree? And what do they represent? Well, there are 13 lanterns. Obviously, that represents the 13 original colonies. Now, the joke that you oftentimes hear around this time of year is that the England had a 13 colony lead and blew it. it, it yeah, that's a funny joke. But yet, yeah, those that is where that comes from. The 13 lanterns represent the original colonies. Question number four. 1952 saw the very first political advertisement on television, and it was made by Disney, famously produced by Roy O. Disney. What presidential candidate was the commercial for? Well, that would be Dwight D. Eisenhower. Now, however you slice it, political ads on TV are not new. People, uh, they run them even in non-presidential years. Even if there's not a big election, in, like a gubernatorial one, there are political advertisements all the time. Now, we can either blame Disney or sit there and say, well, it was going to happen eventually. And this just shows how advanced Disney was and how much he really utilized television and thought it was the future. Still is. Question number five. What made the 500 army troops at the Walt Disney Studios in Burbank, California unique? Well, it was the only Hollywood film studio under military occupation in the history of the United States. No other film studio in the United States had ever been occupied by military. Now, they created films to be able to help train some of the military and the army and some of the other um, parts of our military as well, such as the Navy. They created videos to be able to help them train, to be able to get them ready, as well as movies to kind of help to keep up the spirits of the soldiers as well. And that kind of plays hand in hand with question number six. 
What well-known character was often used in a lot of World War II movies made by Disney? Well, that would be Donald Duck. He was in a lot of movies in World War II, um, fighting the bad guys and trying to uplift the spirits, all that sort of stuff of the soldiers and of the people that watched them because the movies were a great form of entertainment especially during world war, world war ii and a lot of people would get their information from movies obviously not everywhere not everyone had a television at the time so they would have they would get their news from the movies and donald duck was a way to kind of lift some spirits so again a lot of history with disney as part of the fabric of the united states and some of it good some of it bad but always a part of the fabric nonetheless well, I want to thank you for tuning in this week. I will return next Thursday with more questions and more fun. Make sure you follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok, and let us know what your score is. If you're watching us over on YouTube, make sure you subscribe, turn on that bell for notifications, give this video a thumbs up, and in the comments down below, let us know what your score is. If you're not watching us on YouTube, instead you're listening to us at a, as a podcast, make sure you follow us on Apple Podcasts everywhere else. Make sure you download, leave us a five-star review wherever you can as as well and like i said planning a disney vacation has a lot of moving pieces to it if you need a little bit of help planning the perfect disney vacation and you wanted to make it the most magical vacation that you've ever had i would love to be able to help you out you can email me at mouse in the mitten at gmail.com and we can get you all taken care of and make sure that you have a fantastic trip well hey my name's court the dog's name is milo i appreciate you tuning in this week and i will see you next time